Oh, hello, it's Emily, and today I'm going to be doing a video book freakout tag. So I really enjoy watching this tag from other people and seeing their responses to these, and I enjoy thinking about these questions and answering them. Uh, I did it last year. I'll be sure to link that below. And so I just figured it was time to go ahead and do the mid-year book freakout tag. I will say that I'm doing it in July so that I conclude everything that I read uh, from January to June to include the first six months of the year. Um, so this is everything between those months. So yeah, let's just uh, jump right into the questions. The first one starts off with a bang, and that is the best book you've read so far in 2020. Uh, so I'm going to do two books, one series. So I'm going to say the David Bad series. The first one is The City of Brass, the second one is The Kingdom of Copper, and The Empire of Gold is what was just published. Uh, it's by S.A. Chakravorty, and this series is so good. So it follows a badass woman named Nari, and she accidentally summons a warrior genie uh, while she's doing a, a healing ritual, and um, she you know, has to be taken. She goes on an adventure to go to the city of Devabad, the city of Brass, and um, finds out that she's part of a, a line of healers that they thought weren't around anymore, and she gets kind of integrated and thrown into political life in Devabad, and it's, it's phenomenal. It's so good. I love this series so much, and I'm so excited to read The Empire of Gold. So I'd say that those are the best books I've read between January and June, I think, yeah. Second question is the best sequel that I've read so far in 2020, and I think I'm gonna go with The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson. This follows The Final Empire, and is the second book in the Mistborn series. And I just, I love this series so much. I, I just, I love everything about it. The world is super interesting, the magic is super interesting, the characters are incredibly fascinating. Um, so I just, I love everything about this one. Definitely excited to read The Hero of Ages, which is the third and final book in that first era of the Mistborn world, and then there's a second there's a second trilogy that's set sometime later that I also eventually want to read. But yeah, probably Well of Ascension. Third question is new release that you haven't read yet but you want to, and since I am filming this after Empire of Gold has been released, I'm gonna say Empire of Gold. <laughs> Maybe that's cheating, whatever. Um, there are plenty that have been released so far in the first half of 2020 that I haven't read that I really want to, but Empire Gold was definitely very high on my list. It was already high on my list at the end of last year when I made my 2020 anticipated releases, but when I actually read City of Brass and Kingdom of Copper and loved them so much, definitely, I think is... yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I also actually have it on Libby right now. It just went on, uh, the audiobook just went on to Libby uh, through my library. So I was actually able to snag it with no wait time, which I'm extremely excited about. So that will be happening very soon via audio. The fourth question is most anticipated release from the second half of 2020. And there are so many that I'm excited about. I don't know if I can pick one. I'm definitely excited about A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor, which is about to come out. I'm excited about The No Woman's Guide to Scandals and Shipwrecks, which will be coming out in August. Um, Where Dreams Descend was originally going to come out, I think, in June, and has been pushed to August 25th. I'm very excited about that one as well. I've heard it's Phantom of the Opera meets Moulin Rouge, and I'm very excited about all of that. Um, well Played comes out in September, and that follows Well Met, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, a Deadly Education is Naomi Novik's new adult series that's like a dark academia fantasy, and I'm fucking pumped for that. Um, one by One is the new Ruth Ware book, and comes out in November, and follows, uh, I think, a group of co-workers who are on kind of a weekend experience together. It's kind of a you know, work group bonding thing, uh, I'm not sure, and follows their experience. Um, so I'm very excited about all of those. I honestly don't know which one I'm most excited about. There's also The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, and I've come to really love V.E. Schwab through the Darker Shade of Magic series, and um, that one follows a girl who I think she makes a trade to be immortal, but the cost is that no one actually remembers her after they meet her or something, and then she finds someone eventually that actually remembers meeting her. I don't know. I'm intrigued. Um, so those are some of the ones that I'm really excited about for the second half of 2020, and I don't know how to pick just one. So 
Next question is biggest disappointment. So this one would probably either be Children of Virtue and Vengeance. Um, I was, I enjoyed Children of Blood and Bone. I think there was only one major element of Children of Blood and Bone that wasn't my favorite. And I thought that once that was over, that hopefully that wouldn't carry into the second book. But there, there was quite a bit about the characters I didn't connect with as much in the second book. The element that I didn't like in the first book was so very much present in the second one. Like the world and magic are so cool, but I, it ultimately just kind of wasn't what I hoped it would be. Um, also, Eight Will Fall by Sarah Harian. Uh, the concept is so cool, uh, but it just it just didn't didn't do it for me. So yeah, probably probably those two. Biggest surprise, I think I'm gonna go with The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. And it's not that I had low expectations or anything for this one, I honestly just didn't at all know what to expect from this one. I have not read The Night Circus, and so I, I you know, I didn't really know what her writing style was like, or kind of her method of storytelling, and, I, you know, so I just had no idea what to expect, and I had heard enough um, to know that it was, uh, along with the Night Circus, to kind of know that you either really, really love it or really, really don't connect with that style of writing. Um, and I just had no idea where I would fall, and I was very pleasantly surprised that I really, it wasn't a perfect book for me, but I thoroughly enjoyed the reading experience, and it was an experience. <laughs> um, so yeah, probably that one. Seventh question is favorite new author, and I'll probably go with either, so definitely S.A. Chakravorty with the Dave Abad trilogy, um, Victoria Schwab, um, Kristen Kishore is also a huge new favorite. I loved the Graceland series, all three of them, and Brandon Sanderson would be on this list if I hadn't re technically read part of Elantris last year, but I read most of Elantris this year and the first two Mistborn books this year. But technically, I had read a little bit of him last year. Also, Jen DeLuca with Well Met, because that was just a delight from start to finish. So, yeah. Those, those people? Newest fictional crush. Ooh, this one's always a weird one for me, because I don't... It's very hard for me to relate to the romances in, in some of the books that I read. So I don't always... I don't, I won't always have an answer for this one, but I think for this first half of the year, I think I would go probably with Laszlo Strange from Strange the Dreamer. I absolutely adore him with my entire heart and soul. Um, I also really enjoyed Simon, who was the love interest in Well Met. Uh, I really, I really enjoyed him and his character and his dynamic with Emily. So probably one of those two. That's the eighth question. The ninth question is newest favorite character. Uh, Nari is a huge, huge favorite new character from the first half of this year. I do really love Lila Bard from the Darker Shade of Magic series. She's just such a spunky, feisty character. I just, I absolutely love her. Um, Laszlo is another huge favorite character. Okay, the 10th question is a book that made me cry and I literally just looked at the list of all of the books that I've read in the first six months and realized that none of them have made me cry. I'm not generally a crier while reading. Some of them definitely made me emotional, but I don't think I've cried while reading any of them. The eleventh question is, what book made you happy? And uh, definitely the ones that are coming to mind include The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Varnhill. That was just a delight of a book. I, I loved it. I loved it so much. <laughs> that book made me so happy. Um, well, Matt, again, was one that just made me really, really happy the entire time. The twelfth question is the most beautiful book you've bought so far, and it actually, coincidentally, uh, came in today, so I get Fairy Loop, and they always have incredibly gorgeous editions of books, whether that includes the sprayed edges they have, or the artwork that they include under the dust jacket. I actually tend to reverse the dust jacket for a lot of the Fairy Loop books that I get, because they just have gorgeous artwork on the underside of the dust jacket. So I was thinking it would be one of those fairy loot books, and it is a fairy loot book, but I just got the June box today, and they included an arc of the Gilded Ones, and it is stunning. I mean, the original cover is already gorgeous, but they also include this gorgeous foiling and these gorgeous sprayed edges that match kind of the, 
the teal detailing around here and I'm I'm obsessed it is beautiful <laughs> I'm also just in general excited about this book um, it follows our main character here who if she she goes through some sort of blood test to kind of figure out whether or not she's going to belong in her community and if she bleeds red then she'll belong in her community if she bleeds gold then she needs to kind of she it's an indication that i think she has some special abilities or something and she needs to be part of um, a different group of people who are i think the fighters in this world i'm not sure but i'm also stoked for the actual story but gorgeous and the 13th and last question is what books do you need to read by the end of the year um, and obviously that's not a short list and it's hard to narrow down so I'm just gonna in general say finishing the series that I've started so finishing the Mistborn series and continuing on with the Cosme or finishing the Elderling series and kind of continuing on in that world um, finishing the library the invisible library series finishing the Kitty J series um, you know stuff like that just kind of making sure that I'm getting through my list of series is probably one of my priorities this year. So close enough, right? <laughs> That's at least the closest I'm going to be able to get to a short list of like here are the books I want to get to by the end of the year. I also of course have my top books I want to get to in 2020 so I'll be sure to link that below as well. Um, but yeah, that is the mid-year book freakout tag. Let me know your answers below or if you have done this tag uh, be sure to link it below so that I can watch them. I love watching this tag so much. Uh, as I said, it's just a good way to kind of check in and think about your reading so far for the first half of the year. And I have been lucky enough to read some pretty incredible books. Um, I've honestly overall been super happy with a lot of what I've read. Definitely hoping that that will continue for the second half of the year. And yeah, be sure to subscribe below for more bookish content. I'll link my Twitter and Instagram down below. That's where I like to chat and hang out. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>